Hello everyone, it is Sabrina here and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a video that is just perfect for the weather. It has been rainy and getting colder here as we're entering autumn and I am so excited for the season. I feel like autumn just exudes coziness and warmth and family and baked goods. So I'm really excited for this new season and as we enter it, I thought I would create a video on what it means to create a peaceful and cozy Christian home and how you can do that in your own house. I have a couple of tips here. Some of them are very, very practical. Actually, all of them are very, very practical and apply to all people in all stages of life. You don't have to be a woman who runs her own home. In order to do this, you can be a child in your parents' home. You can be living with other people as roommates. But these are just things that you can do to create a home that is just worth being in. Because as Christians, we understand that scripture tells us the home is the starting point of everything. It is where the family unit functions and then that family unit, as they leave the home, impact the world around it. When you think about all the terrible people out there in the world, they all come from a home and most of the time those homes are broken, those homes are desolate, they are not full of the word of God and we see the effects of so many homes that are devoid of the word of God and the way of God. So that's why I think that the home is central to building up our country, building up our communities around us and having a fruitful thriving life is to focus on the home so today i wanted to talk about what it really means to create a peaceful and cozy christian home and how you can do that so the first thing is to adopt a fresh attitude are you a pleasant person to be around this is just what we have to sit and ask ourselves am i a pleasant person to be around our attitude towards life on a daily basis hugely influences our family's reactions towards us. So if your kids are always whining and complaining and dragging their feet to do everything and they just don't want to be around you and everybody's miserable all the time, your husband's not really wanting to be around you, he's miserable, instead of blaming them right away, stop and ask yourself, am I the reason that these people are reacting like this? Have I failed to discipline my kids? Have I failed to have a good fresh attitude every single day a joyful heart and am I treating my husband like another one of my annoying little kids and not the man that I chose to do life with and be a partner with pleasantness of attitude is the core of God's law in Matthew 22 verses 37 through 38 it says and he said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So first of all, we are told love God. Second of all, we are told to love our neighbor as ourself. Our family is the closest neighbor we have. Oftentimes when we read this, we automatically think of the people that live in the house next to us. But what about the people living in the house with us? Our husband is our neighbor. Our children are our neighbors. They're the closest ones we have. Yet we often treat our actual physical neighbor next to us so much better than these people God has given us to live with. And I think that needs to change. Why do I say that pleasantness is the pleasantness of attitude is the core of God's law? I believe it's because God just doesn't want us to just conform to an outward law. He wants us to change our hearts. What he desires is a heart and a posture that loves him, loves others truly and genuinely, not just a heart that cooks the food but resents the people who eat it, who folds the laundry but can't stand the people who created it. And God wants us to love these people, our families, with our whole hearts genuinely. He doesn't just want us to do things for them. A lot of moms do things for their families and they're very faithful in doing them and working hard, but their children still have nothing good to say about their mother because her attitude is rotten. Her husband doesn't want to be with his wife because her attitude is resentful and bitter all the time. And so we really have to stop and ask ourselves, what is the kind of attitude I have around my family? This is a kind of attitude that does not depend on circumstances, but that comes from spending time with the Lord and understanding his will for us. Another verse in Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. When we choose to have joy, when that's a choice we make, we can create healing and an atmosphere of comfort for our family. 
when we have a constantly crushed spirit and we choose to be wallowing in our bad attitudes and in the physical pain we're in and in the sleepless nights we've had and we lash out at the people around us, it dries up everybody's bones. Nobody is happy. Everybody is miserable. And the woman of the household can either build up her home or tear it down with her own hands. So I have a video that's going to be talking more about having a willing heart when you serve your family. But in this video, I just want to focus on making sure you have a right attitude. The second tip that I have is to don't be in a rush. Work hard in the home, but live slowly and intentionally. I know that may sound very contradictory. How can you work hard and also live slowly? I'm not talking about being idle or sluggish or just taking forever to do things. I'm talking about knowing what time it is to rest, knowing what time it is to stop what you're doing and slow down and play and talk with your kids, stop what you're doing and spend more time with your husband, and when to work and how to involve your kids with you in your work. Psalm 46 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I think the first part is really important. Be still and know that I am God. What does that mean? <laughs> so being still requires stopping your movement and just sitting in the silence. And then the second part, know that I am God. This implies that we have to know the God that whom we worship. For me, I can get into such a rhythm of working hard and just being productive and doing all these very good and needed things in my home. It's not like I'm just busying my hands for no reason. However, if we don't know when and how to slow down to be in the moment with our kids, with our husbands, or just to even take some time to rest for spiritual care, then we are not going to be having a peaceful home. A home where the mother is constantly running around and trying to get things done and always in a frazzle and always late, that is not a peaceful home. And so it's really important that as women, we learn time management. We learn how to go to bed early and sleep well so that we have energy to be able to wake up and do all the things we need to do. We need to learn how to stay off our phones and stop idleness. We need to learn how to slow down when it's needed. So when your children are in a moment where they need to be disciplined or trained or taught or just spent time with, we need to stop what we're doing and tend to them. And I think scheduling parts of your day like, okay, I'm going to bake these muffins and then after, as they're in the oven, I'm going to stop and read some books to my children. And then I'm going to get back into cooking and doing the dishes and then I will move on to laundry and try to include your children with what you do. So for example, for me, when I do the dishes, I like to have my one and a half year old literally hand me all the utensils and I will put them in the drawer. And she loves to do that. She's spending time with me and I get to spend some time with her. I think as mothers if and as women, and just as homemakers in general, if we don't learn the value and rest, then we will not be productive in everything else that we do. And biblically, we see God has set aside the Sabbath day, which is a Sunday, for us to rest and worship him and enjoy our family and just have a day where we recoup. And I noticed in myself, I was working on Sundays after church, after lunch and fellowship with people. I was coming home and doing all the work that I normally do throughout the week on a Sunday. And I realized it was burning me out. God created that day for me to rest. And here I was not knowing how to live slowly. And it's an intentional rest. It's not just, oh, I'm going to throw myself on the couch and just chill. It's an intentional, I'm going to slow myself down. I know there needs, there are things that needs to be done, but I want to prioritize my rest. I need to prioritize my spiritual care. In fact, as Christians, we need to be using our time differently than those of the world. That is very crucial because God has told us, worship me, pray, read, spend time with me. And in a world where everybody is so busy and whenever there is a moment of rest, we just sit on our phones or watch movies and we call that self-care. God doesn't say that's what's going to give us rest and self-care. He says, come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So this is so important. Don't be in a rush as a mother and as a wife. Work hard, but live slowly and learn how to take rest and be intentional with everything that you do. The third thing is to fill your home with meaningful, calming pieces. If you have a very cluttered home with just a million things everywhere all the time, and even if there's no decorations, your children and your husband are not going to feel very relaxed. And <laughs> it's not going to feel peaceful. 
I think it's very essential that as women, we learn how to bring decor and furniture and just pieces into our home that will enrich our family's life. I have a whole video on the topic of how to create a cozy home and how to how I decorate it and everything. And those are just some practical tips that you can implement in your home. But um, I just want to say this, that when you are decorating for instagram to impress the people on the internet you're decorating to match all the expensive homes and magazines that you see online and on instagram when you are decorating to please a certain aesthetic that you have in your brain but you're not decorating for your family's functionality and peace of mind your home is not going to be a cozy peaceful place i think that before we want to fit a certain aesthetic we should think about what does my family need from home home should be a safe haven it should be a place of rest it should be a place that's calming from the noisy distracting world and we should have colors and things in our home that give us comfort that are meaningful verses on the walls family photos on the walls as opposed to just these trendy cute little paintings and pictures from different targets and whatever having an uncomfy couch for your husband to come lay on after work is not giving him a peaceful restful place to be and so just thinking about these types of things and what we bring into our home it may not seem like a big deal but i'm telling you guys when you take time to listen to what your family wants what your family needs and desires they just want to have a warm comfortable place to be at they don't want to be in a magazine they don't want to be on joanna Gaines' website they want to be in a cozy functional home filled with meaningful things keep a clean orderly home so lately i have been convicted of not working as hard as i should be and keeping my home clean and so i've committed myself to just constantly making sure that this is a priority is that my home is picked up and clean and I can't tell you how much of a difference it's made in my home my husband loves it so much more my child actually enjoys it more too because I've been very intentional about what kind of toys she gets to play with and what kind of things she's around and so I just think that keeping a clean and orderly home it gives everybody an opportunity to feel like they can have a breath of fresh air so I'm not talking about just cleaning frantically all the time and always yelling at people for putting things around like no have a system have a way that you you know maintain your home throughout the day and don't stress out the people who live in your home by trying to keep it clean but my main point with this is just having a home that is always cluttered and always randomly everything is tossed around the dishes are always full in the sink and you don't have cleaning routines this is not good for your family. It is not good for your mental health or for the family around you. I used to have a reset day throughout the week, maybe one or two, and I realized that is not wise and is not sustainable. I need to be having routines on the daily to maintain my home, and I am so much less stressed out now. I don't let messes build up. I don't have big reset days where I do a bunch of laundry, dishes, cleaning, bathrooms, all in one day. Now, I spread that throughout my days so that I'm not overwhelmed and having to do these big reset days. I think that that was one of the worst things that I could be implementing in my home is reset days where I just do everything at once. Now, there's nothing wrong with a deep clean reset day. I still have those, but I'm just saying on a weekly basis, do not wait for one or two days to do all the work of cleaning. You have to maintain it throughout every single day throughout every single hour cleaning up little things as you see them because i'm telling you in the long run this will help you mentally so much more your family will appreciate it you will be um having these little systems in place that will allow you to maintain a clean home while still doing other things that you need to do the fifth thing is low lighting anything like string lights lamps candles that cozy low lighting that just gives an atmosphere of warmth and peace to the home this has made a huge difference in my house as well i asked my husband to get me several lamps and um, sconces on the walls and little just lights everywhere because i feel like it helps us so much in the evenings to just unwind and get ready for bed when there's not all these bright over light overhead lights on it kind of feels like a bunch of little cozy fires started in all these different corners and i like that a lot i also do notice that i myself am a lot more relaxed when i have these things these little lights these little candles running around and i don't think these things are frivolous and meaning meaningless i do think that they psychologically do something to us to relax us 
the sixth thing is to strive to always have baked goods or food in the fridge so this is something again i have been recently working on and it's actually so much fun to bake i never knew i loved it this much i recently got into the whole sourdough thing so it's been really fun but essentially having a muffins or a pumpkin bread or a banana bread or fresh bread on the counter cookie something that your family can always just know is there baked at home it's healthy made by mom it's actually very comforting to have that and i do think it just creates a very cozy home to have baked goods even throughout the summer especially now that we're entering fall and winter though it is definitely much appreciated so these are just a couple of the things that i've thought of when it comes to creating a peaceful and cozy christian home obviously so much more can be said and everybody has different ways that this is going to come out in their homes but my main purpose in this video is to encourage us all Number one, to understand what kind of attitude we are portraying to our family and that lives in our heart. Are we constantly being thankful and grateful to the Lord for everything or are we complaining? And then also to understand how important it is to rest and time manage so that you can have time for the important things and prioritize the important things. You want to be known as the woman who loves her family and prioritizes her family not as a woman who is frazzled constantly complaining about all her chores has a messy home has a cluttered home has one that just doesn't exude comfort and warmth or coziness in any way so i hope that these things could really encourage you guys i know that they have encouraged me and just provoked me to think more about how i create the atmosphere in my home and i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you in the next one